All right, everybody, this is Eternal Blade here, and welcome back to the tutorial. So, um, let's just start off, of course, with uh, a few little adjustments here. You always got to keep making adjustments. Uh, if you stop making them, well, something is probably not quite right. So, we're actually just going to flatten this arch out just a bit. I think it was just a bit too uh, a bit too steep for my liking. All right, so we got to come here to the Ezreal Poly and uh, just adjust these along with it. Nothing too difficult, just something we uh, need to do. All right. All right, looking good. And the reason I'm doing this is because the uh, The reference image basically told me so. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, next, <clears throat> I'm thinking, not fully sure yet. We may have to sink this wall in a bit, but it's probably fine. So uh, I guess without further ado, I think today we're going to tackle uh, possibly the curtains. So let's go to splines here. And uh, let's make a rectangle. We're going to make a rectangle sort of in this general region. Like that. Okay. Now, this rectangle basically needs to be the size of a curtain completely unfolded. <clears throat> so, my guess is this is probably good but I don't actually know that for sure so we're gonna make it a bit bigger oops not the length the width there we go and we're just gonna put it over here and we're gonna try a couple things uh, the first of which is we're gonna make some boxes here And actually, let's um, yeah, delete that box. We'll just isolate the selection here. And we'll just go into uh, perspective mode here. Top left with this front. <coughs> and you can get rid of grids by pressing G. And let's get rid of this safe frames by pressing, I thought it was Shift F. It is Shift F, don't know why it didn't work. OK. So here we go. Um, Let's build a box sort of on the top right here. And it doesn't have to be very big, mind you. Okay, there we go. Just place it right about there. And then let's put one over here. And sort of one in the middle. Sort of one right here. Oops. One. Uh, let's see. Weird. What is, what is this? I'm gonna press Q too many times. So up here, just change that back, back to rectangle mode. All right, and I'm just pressing W to move. And I think, I think that should be good for now. Let's get another box going, and we're gonna put that over here. About this height. I'll convert that to an editable poly. Let's go into our main perspective, grab this, use the extrude tool, and just extrude out, extrude out. And what this is going to do is kind of replicate the sash in our cloth sim, I hope. I'm sort of rusty on cloth sim, so we'll see how that goes. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so let's bring these up just a little bit. Not you, but these, and there we go. So let's do a garment maker. All right, and we'll give it a little bit of density here. Maybe you really, really got to watch out here how much you give it, because you can easily overdo it. But I think that. 
All right, so now we've got our garlic maker. Now I think we need to add uh, ah, crap. This is why you save. And as you can tell, I didn't save, but I've only been recording for five minutes. So we're going to attempt to save a copy of the scene. OK. All right, let's, uh, let's try this again. I hope it saved. If it didn't, well, that's life. <clears throat> yeah, this is um, all real, unscripted, unedited. So you're sort of seeing the real deal here. Um, let me just check and see if things worked. Or perhaps they didn't work. All right, so it turned out our thing did work uh, and it recovered. So let's file, save as, go to your recent scenes and just save it. Bingo. Okay, so here we are. So what we're doing is we're adding a cloth modifier here. All right, now let's go to object properties, I believe. And this is our main cloth. So we're gonna make this a cloth. And we're just gonna give it uh, Generic sort of heavy, heavy fabric. That should work for us. Let's add objects as, okay, don't add objects yet. Let's press okay, I don't know what this object is. This is box, we'll call this curtain pusher. Okay, so add objects, curtain pusher, add. And that will be a collision object. Uh, we'll enable collisions. We will not cut the cloth. Okay. And what we need to do here is go in the group section. I believe let's grab this. We'll make a group. That's fine. And this group is going to need to link so we're going to, oh, how do we do this again? Hmm. All right, um, so even though we have the group there, let's go to our object properties here and just add these remaining objects in here. Okay, and these will also be collision objects. Okay. Now, going back to our group here, we can grab this group, go to surface, and I believe we should be able to add this. Okay, I just didn't have these um, boxes as collision objects. For some reason, it didn't save, so we're good now. So let's uh, just grab a couple more here, make group, group two. Go to surface and you can click. Okay, um, let's grab these couple. Here, make group, group three, surface and click. Okay, grab these, um, make group, okay, surface and click. And let's do the last two over here, make group, okay, surface and click. All right, now what we're gonna basically do is um, animate these things sort of closing uh, in on each other to get something similar to our reference image which is here I just pulled it up again so I can see about where I need to go so let's just uh, go to our auto key here and we'll just bring it to 30 seconds is about a second we'll go to 60 just in case All right and just bring them all a little closer in okay to about here should be good now what we're going to do here is end isolation mode and the reason we're going to do this is we need to make sure all this stuff sort of lines up so let's go into our left view here and then just drag it over Basically, um, we need to go to the other side over here. 
So right about there, so that should be fine. Okay, we're good with that. All right, so let's go back into isolation mode. All right, now I believe we, so these should all just sort of, that's good. Now after those are done, we want to animate this. So let's do auto key, we'll set a key right here and then sort of 80. We'll just bring it over to sort of oh, here-ish. That should scrunch it up. So we sort of have these things move in and then we scrunch, theoretically. Uh, so let's save this. We really want to save this because this thing crashes so much it's ridiculous. And I think we can try simulate. So here we go. We got some crunchy stuff going on. That's a lot of stretching. We may have to redo it, but it's cool. Um, things are still moving along. All right, so we're hitting 60. Now this thing comes in, swoopage, and bam. Okay, let's stop simulating here. What have we got? We got sort of a curtain. Wasn't so bad. But we had too much. Um, too much shrinkage. So let's erase simulation. We'll drag these back. We'll go to object properties. Curtain uh, rectangle. And let's, let's see. I want to use a preset. I thought we said generic heavy. Maybe it didn't save. Hmm. Very odd. It doesn't. Well, maybe it did save, but let's try something else. Let's try. We'll just try cotton see how that works. Um, for this object, let's bring that way back and also go over here, auto grid, and let's sort of bring it over a little more. And maybe we will, that'll be good. Let's just bring the whole thing down so it's a bit lower, kind of like here-ish. Okay, and let's try again. So, <clears throat> get a good position to view it and simulate. All right, so here we go, we can see the stretch. Looks a little better than last time. Okay, we're coming together. go we're coming in coming in coming in looks like we're going almost too fast but it will be okay and it won't be okay okay so let's uh, this object isn't even touching it erase simulation object properties curtain pusher is not a collision object. There we go, that will solve the problem. Okay, so let's go to object properties again, go to our rectangle, and see the stretch, I think we want that, uh, maybe 50. We'll try that, okay. So let's um, simulate again. This is just a trial and error with the cloth. I mean, eventually you'll get it. Okay. Let's see, get our 100 frames in. Let's then pause it. All right, so we're back again, and you can see we're sort of getting some sort of result, but it's not quite uh, what I envisioned. Not, not at all. I mean, it's closer, but... This other way, you see, we kind of got this like squished up segment. 
so let's erase our simulation again and bring it back. I think we do simply need to right click here and just go to end time. We'll just do 200 just to give us a little more room and bring that one out a bit. Okay. And let's actually press E. We'll rotate this up. All right, that should work. Um, and give me. All right, um, so let's go to our rectangle here and change the U stretch to maybe 150. This will stop it from stretching so much. <clears throat> okay. And then we're going to grab this and. I guess we're going to simulate again. All right, so after simulating for a second, here's what we came up with, and this actually isn't bad. Looking at it, you kind of have like you know where the sash would be tied. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit messed up, but um, that'll be covered anyway. Some nice folds. So let's um, end isolation mode here, and let's save this just before we do anything. I actually do save as a uh, 10 point or uh, 10 dash one just to give a different file name all right let's grab this and simply shoot it over here all right let's just try to position it into our scene so here's what we've got um, not quite like the reference image, but honestly, not all that bad. Not all that bad at all. So let's uh, raise it up a bit and drag it over a bit more. There we go. And that's actually that's actually really good. I mean, I'm not going to complain too much about that. Oops. Um, the only thing is this piece looks like it needs to be a little higher, so we're going to undo everything we just did. Okay, go to Erase Simulation, and we're going to take this bad boy, and we're just going to move him up a little bit to about there. All right. And we're going to do a, um, oh, oh, let's, we did something wrong here. Yeah, erase simulation, drag him back, bring him up. There we go. All right, so let's go to object properties, make sure our clock is still good, 150, perfect. Um, and let me simulate it again here with the <clears throat> thing being a bit a bit higher all right so here we go all right so we're back from simulating land and i think we've got something we can uh, we can work with here so let's um bring it back into our scene Okay, there we go, and maybe drag it over a bit. Okay, and let's drag it up just a tad. And I think, my friends, that's all she wrote. So let's um, save this again. And let's just open up our perspective and check it out. I mean, that's pretty darn close. I mean, yeah, we have a bit of overlap here, but I mean, there's only so much you can do there. So let's do a turbo smooth just to smooth out some of the, the wrinkles there. Let's just see. Two. Two seems a bit high. So let's go with one and be happy. Okay. So we can copy this over. 
and not do that. All right, interesting. Maybe editable poly. Now copy over. There we go. No. Wow, that's odd. Okay. Um. This is a new one. I've never. All right. Let's just try this. Complete editable poly. Ha! I win. You lose. So let's flip it. Actually, uh, we want to flip it on in that direction. Okay, and let's see. Good, we're on the other side now. And just position this one sort of a similar distance. All right, perfect. And let's make these gray. All right, now look at that. Room's really coming together. Um, now, for the little sashes, I think honestly our best bet is just to model those by hand, I'm thinking, the little sashes that go around the edges here. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that, I think. So let's just make a box. Okay. And kind of convert to editable poly here. We'll just take the. Uh, what do I want to do here? I just grab this, give it uh, three connections. Press one and sort of drag it back and drag it back again. Okay, now let's grab these and scale them pretty small. Grab these and scale them a little less small. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's do a turbo smooth. That'll give us the kind of <clears throat> shape we're looking for. Let's actually grab all of these though and scan them up. We're a bit small here. Okay, maybe do four iterations look nice. Now do a noise. And we will just do X sort of Y and Z. Okay, and bring this scale sort of down a bit. All right, let's bring the, the Z down just a tad. Okay, there we go. Press E, and let's rotate that into position. Okay, there we go. Rotate it a bit this way. All right, and again, it'll require a bit of adjusting, mind you, because our curtains aren't perfect. Actually, let's take our curtains here and shrink them down that way. Actually, let's get both the curtains and shrink them the same amount just so they sort of fit in the, the doorway. Okay, and let me think about this momentarily. All right, so we need to be up here. And let's rotate it here. All right. I'm going to edit a poly and let's do some just edits here. All right, let's do a quick sort of connect. I really didn't need that many, but it'll work. So I'll just sort of drag everything to where it sort of fits. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly aligned again. Not going to see too much of it. Okay, and again, this side doesn't really matter at all. We're just sort of doing it to do it, just in case the reflections happen to catch it. Okay, 
So let's grab those. Sort of bring them in. And now let's look in the camera here to see what else we need to change. So let's grab this and just sort of drag it like so. Okay, there we go. Grab these. So I drag them up. Bring these a little farther out. And let's grab these top ones and sort of bring them down like so. So there we go. Now we have sort of a decent looking sash thing, although I must admit it's not very big. Let's go to Polygon here. And let's select all the inside polygons and extrude them from the local normal. Well, I believe we got the wrong polygons here. Hmm. We definitely got the wrong polygons. I don't know why I cannot select the right polygons. Huh. Very odd. Let's um, isolate selection. Save again. As we'll call it, polygons. I extrude this. How odd. Well, that makes a little more sense. Our lines here are sort of messed up. There we go. Just resolve any of these little issues we have. Actually, we'll just thicken it up this way. This works just as well. Okay. All right. And all right. Let's thicken this one up here. Throw us move it. Noise. Now we have kind of a thicker sash. Still not quite thick enough though. So we're gonna go to edge and connect. Give it one good connection there, see what that does for us. Thickens it up a bit. Okay. So, end isolation mode. Now let's click on this and adjust some more things here. So let's shift click, connect, just add one connection. And we'll just sort of position it. Okay, let's bring, let's see, we don't really have any geometry here, so we'll just make some. Okay, bring that out. And there we go, we have a pretty good looking sash. Um, we can also, if we want to have a bit more control, do a connection here, and that way we can sort of just control the bottom a bit by looking at these vertices. We can just sort of bring them in. Okay. All right. And there we go. Now we've got our sash. And let's just shift drag this over here and flip it and kind of move it into position. I'll we'll have to adjust this one. Actually, I think if we just symmetry it on, I think it's the X, and move it over, it should work. Bingo, it does. So, click those, make them gray. And I believe with that, we can call this part a wrap. We've now got some nice curtains, some little sashes. Uh, you can use a cloth modifier for the sashes too if you want. Um, it's up to you. 
So I will see you guys in the next part. Um, happy modeling. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And have a good night now because it is 9 p.m.